couple of readings. This, the first one is in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. This is what it says. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was placed to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 700 years before these events had taken place, a man called Isaiah, he wrote this in chapter 7 verse 14 of his prophecy, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. There you go. God with us. Forty years ago, about right now, I was driving up the M1 from Loughborough in a borrowed car. My father in law's Fiat 1. Two eight, I think it was, a Mirafiore. Came off at junction 40, drove along whatever road it is, and I turned left into a street called Dale Street. I would only got about 20 yards along that road and I saw on the right hand side there a place with a label across the front of Gospel Hall. Now you might wonder why I was coming up here going into Austin. Yorkshire was a place I knew nothing about, other than the fact that it was big, and to get from central Scotland to Loughborough, you pretty much have to go through Yorkshire. That's as much as I knew about it. I knew nobody here in Yorkshire, I knew nobody in Austin. But we had determined that we were going to um, live in Austin. See, what had happened was the, I was faced with Hobson's choice. I either move from central Scotland where we lived at the time and come down to Yorkshire or I get made redundant. Jonathan was not quite two years old. Ruth was just a bump. She hadn't arrived at that point in time. I've got a choice to make. Now, the situation I was in, when, if just adults are involved in yeah, it's a big deal, but you can make decisions reasonably easily. But when you've got a family involved, that's a massive, massive responsibility. I had just changed jobs a year before this because I wanted to stay in central Scotland. I was involved in a church there. I was involved in a work in a young offenders institution. And I thought, this is a place that God wants for me. It's a place that I believe God wants for myself and Karen and the family to grow up. And when I was faced with this choice, I thought, where's God in this? He, he just, this just can't be right. This is something that's happening that shouldn't be happening. Karen and I were reading through the Bible. And you start in Genesis and you read through it. And at that time we had gone to um, Genesis chapter 46 and we read. And this is what it says. So Israel set out with all that was his and when he reached Beersheba he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. So far so good. What has that got to do with me? In verse 2 it says, And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob. Why did it say Jacob twice? 
just to make sure you have the first time. Jacob and Brit is speaking to you. And Jacob said, Here I am. And God speaks. I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. I'm not saying that England is Egypt. I'm not saying that I'm Jacob. Karen and I honestly believe that God spoke to us through these scriptures. He said, my purpose for you is to leave where you are and go down to your best church and to live there. That's the reason why that Christmas was spent up with Karen's mum and dad down at Loughborough. And we're going to be spending probably about a week there. And on this day, the 27th of December, we drove up from um, Lockerup up to Osset just to look to find where we could live, where we could buy a house. We've been there for 40 years. 40 years coming the 21st of May. Is God with us? Have a look at that verse. Jesus said to the disciples, he was about to leave them. He says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world can accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. <coughs> Jesus came, given the name Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus was one person in a body. He was confined to that body. He could be only in one place at one time. But Jesus says, I'm going away. And I will send the Holy Spirit, another comforter. <clears throat> and he will be with you forever. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, God is with you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, according to what Jesus said, God is in you. The Holy Spirit has taken up residence with you. That's a tremendous truth. Back there all these years ago, people who worshipped at the temple in Jerusalem, you know what? You take the temple with you. That's what the Bible says. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God is with us. Look back over these 40 years. God is with you, even when you think he isn't. little thank you to um, certainly Rachel and Helen and others, I'm sure, for contributing to the hampers. But it's been very much appreciated. And uh, lovely that um, you could be a, play a big part in that. Others could, could help as well. Um, the carol singing last week uh, amongst um, the people just at Newfield Lodge, some lovely feedback. Lovely feedback. Um, I, I noticed a thing that Sam Barry put on, on Facebook about, um, and I'm not on Facebook, but it was on, it was on, she put it on CCC, just about um, one of the workers there in the window upstairs taking a video uh, of a singing, and she said these words, that's Lee and Rachel. I used to love them when I came to Cutsack. And I thought, how, how God is with us. In all these circumstances, and you know, I felt a bit fragile out there, I don't know about you, singing to the music that wasn't always just in the right sort of sense, but we were united with the love of God, so lots to give thanks for and uh, praise the name of our God. I just want to say for a few minutes, and the clock's coming down, and we're, we're nearly there, so for um, a couple of our younger listeners, right? to ensure even more maybe chocolate, you've probably had enough already for the next year, but um, if you can remember the king's name I'm going to mention in a moment. Nothing else, just the king's name, okay? Go. Oh, no. It was a, a Christmas um, message from Justin um, Welby, and he just um, spoke just for about 30 seconds on Emmanuel, you know, God with us. And I, I began to look at that verse. First of all, does anybody know why sometimes you spell it with a, an I and sometimes with an E? Emmanuel. 
So it's spelled I double M A N U E L, or sometimes it's spelled with, with, with the E. It's it's pretty simple. They're pretty, pretty simple. The Emmanuel spelled with an I is the Hebrew. That's to the Jews. And when it's spelled with an E, it's the Greek. So I I'd have often wondered why sometimes you know when you're writing that word it was spelled with an I. But that's the simple uh, definition from it. Now, What's caught my imagination is, how has God been with us when we're not meeting as a church? How has God been with us when we're meeting individually and not able to embrace our family? How is God affecting us in our lives when we're at school and it's so hard to be at school when you're not really at school because you're isolating or you're... And this has affected us in, in different ways throughout the last seven or eight months. So what I want to do very briefly, while that clock goes down to half past, you tell me, you, you guys, when it gets there, you stand up or something and we'll, and we'll stop. All right? Okay. So, it's one of the names given to Jesus by an Old Testament prophet Isaiah. And I want us to reflect on what the word Emmanuel means to us individually this morning. What it meant to Matthew and what impact it had on Isaiah. Because it's an intriguing part of the story. And if you've got your Bibles and you want to just turn to chapter 7 of Isaiah, um, it just shows us a little bit about the history um, of a king. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. And you, you've really got to read it through a few times. So you might be able to do that later on um, when you get home. So just glance at it now. I'm going to summarise the reading as you, you follow it in your own Bible. And basically what Isaiah 7 is saying is that Syria and Israel wanted to form a coalition with Judah to fight the Assyrians. In other, in other words, in this time 700 years ago, there was a massive difficulty um, in the land of Israel. There were different fractions coming together. And here's the word I was asking... Um, Something to remember for later. The king at the time of Judah was King Ahaz. You probably will forget that pretty soon. But um, King Ahaz. And King Ahaz wanted to form an allegiance. But he wavered. He wasn't sure what to do. And of course, um, Syria and Israel said to him, If you don't make your mind up soon, uh, we're going to dethrone you. We're going we're, we're to put somebody else as king. And you might be thinking to yourselves now, well, what's that got to do with Emmanuel? What's that got to do with Christmas? What's that got to do with the name of the Lord Jesus? So while, while King Ahaz is wavering and wondering what to do, because he was quite an evil king, and I don't want to say this too harshly, but he actually did horrible things to children. And that's sometimes what people have done down the years when they've, when they've got power they actually had people killed. Mums and dads might tell you more about that um, in, in a better way than I can just now, but, but it's, it's right to mention it. And Isaiah was sent, um, in verse 9 of chapter 7, um, to speak with King Ahaz. And Isaiah just simply said this, Trust in God, not with men. And there's a lovely verse, it's in verse 9, it says, Stand up for your faith. If you don't stand up for your faith, you stand up for nothing. And I think it's a, a brilliant verse uh, for me at Christmas time. That stand up for your faith. In other words, don't just follow what everybody else does at school. Don't just do what everybody else does at work. Don't do what everybody else does sometimes even in church. Stand up for the truth um, of the gospel, for the truth of the Lord Jesus. And it says in that chapter, chapter 7, the king chose not to listen to God and he placed his trust elsewhere. Now, what Isaiah told the king was this, ask God for a sign, and he'll give you a sign. And what, what the sign was, it was going to be that a baby was going to be born. Now, this is a different baby to Jesus. This is a baby that maybe we don't really know the name, but it was a baby for that time, for that generation, as a sign that God's grace would be with the children and the people of Israel. Notice what happens next. 
King Ahaz ignored the sign from God, a baby, in the same way that people ignore the baby Jesus today. So we're no different, and our nation, Castleford, is no different to the people of God many, many years ago. So they, the, if you look at chapter 7, it tells you that a baby was born. You see, God didn't say, all right, you won't listen to me, O King Ahaz, I'm not going to send this baby. God is faithful. And a baby was born in Isaiah's day. A baby that would bring judgment on Ahaz and deliver the small remnant, the small group of people who still believed and still were faithful to God. In the same way that God will do that for us today. We're just a small group of people in church. We're missing a, a lot of our lovely um, family, a lot of our brothers and sisters. And my heart aches for them. And I'm sure yours, yours does too. In chapter 9, later on in Isaiah, Isaiah would later write about uh, the Emmanuel, the God with us, the baby that was going to be born in a stable uh, in Bethlehem. Notice this, just a little fact that, that, I, that, that I noticed by reading through Matthew's Gospel. Matthew 1 verse 23 says that they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew 28 verse 20, the very last verse in Matthew says... I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. So Matthew is writing his gospel to the Jews, and he starts off with Emmanuel in the Hebrew, God is with us, and he finishes it, he finishes his, his last verse in chapter 28, verse 20, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. So it meant an awful lot to Isaiah that this baby that was born that wasn't Jesus but a baby in the time where, when Isaiah lived was born as, as judgment on King Ahaz and that would bring a warmth to Isaiah's heart because he, he recognised that God was faithful even when others in Castleford aren't believing God he would be faithful to us faithful to our lives if we honour him and trust him what did it mean to Matthew? well it meant to Matthew that he was this small light in the shadow of darkness when there was King Herod, when there was rulers, when there was disruption, just like in our society today. Unrest, uncertainty. It meant that to Matthew, it was a small light, a beginning of, of, of the gospel, that this invisible God was going to stoop so low to humanity that he was going to send his son from heaven to be born as a babe in, in Bethlehem. You know that bit. But Matthew was beginning to see, uh, uh, as he wrote this, this Gospel of Matthew, that the invisible God was going to make himself seen, was going to make himself visible. In, in other words, the God of Abraham and Isaac was going to come down to earth. Now, this is so amazing, and yet what happens next is so, so difficult to understand. The people in Matthew's day refused to look at him as God, as the Messiah. And he was still invisible to them. He was there as a baby in Bethlehem. He was there as the Messiah. He was recognized in all parts of the country of Israel. But they closed their eyes to him. Just like the people outside when we sang the cattle this morning. Some looked across, some drew the curtains back, one lady waved to us, which was nice. But there were those who were thinking, what are those silly people doing? Why are they wasting the time? On a Sunday morning, when we can be watching television, we can be sat by a warm fire, we can be just playing on a video game, we can be doing all manner of things. What stupid, that's what they're thinking. You know, and sometimes the devil plays with our hearts and he says, well, you are a bit silly, really. And Matthew, his, his heart was warmed when, it, when he wrote these words because um, he could see that something great was happening in the nation of Israel. There were times when Jesus um, was teaching in the temple and they tried to stop him. They shook their ears to him. Jesus was saying to them, I want to die for you. I've come to give you life. I've come to, to give you abundant life. And I will still forgive you. 
As we bring this to a close, as the clock gets there and the lads haven't stood up yet for me, so we're just about, we're just about there. Um, Emmanuel, God with us. So what does it mean to us today? God with us. Alec has um, given us a lovely illustration of him and Karen coming down um, from Scotland and looking for a house in, in Osset, in, in West Yorkshire, all those years ago. God with us. There have been moments in my life when I've struggled because of circumstances, sometimes at the Yorkshire camp. And I've thought, this isn't right. It's just me, a personal thing. The work of camp is amazing and fantastic. And yet, in the quiet moments of camp, when all the hustle and bustle has been going on, God has shown to me that He's with me. And He's helped me. And He's lifted me up. Not in a big way, not in a way that anybody else would know. Just by a conversation with someone who has something to share. Just by someone who wants to give their life to the Lord Jesus. And you think, well, that is amazing. God is with me. Often we think that God is only with us when some, we've lost someone in our family and, or we're struggling with health, that we mentioned this, this morning. Or it's a relationship problem. But God is with us all the time in every situation and he gave a sign to Isaiah and he gave a sign to Matthew so here's my challenge my very simple challenge as we finish what sign is God giving to you that is with you what sign is God giving to you the doctors are overrun the hospitals are doing amazing things but it's just so so hard for them and so hard for people to go to hospital when you go to school it's like one step forward and three steps back you can't just play with people in the same way that you would play with them before or have your friends around the bills are mounting up for some people in Castleford and in Baku where I am and there's no, not enough money coming in to pay he's gone with us in those little things he's in and yet some people seem to struggle more than others. God wants to be with us even when it's tricky, even when we're slipping, even when all hope seems to be gone. A lovely verse in Psalm 23, when David was just thinking about his life and he said those lovely words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. But it's verse 4 that um, sort of sprung to me. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. David experienced that as a shepherd, as a king. Even when he did things wrong with other people, and when he was in the wrong, and when he, when, when he was guilty, he recognised that God was with him. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Romans 8 verse 31 says, God is for us. Everything might be against us, but God is for us. 1 John 3 verse 24 says, God is in us. Alex mentioned that to us this morning. And Matthew 1 23 says, God is with us. Let's try and experience that as we go through the rest of this year and start a new year. God is with us in all our situations. Let's just pray together and then our service is over. And we can find out where the chocolate is, or maybe where even more chocolate is. Father God, we recognise that you were invisible to us at one point in our life. We didn't know you. We tried all sorts of ways to contact you and to try and get to know you, and yet there was that day when, through the eye of faith, we saw you. And you came into our lives and you forgave our sin. You were, you were no longer invisible to us. And you've never ever left us since then. Sometimes I want to go my own way, my own strength. And you have to bring me back down. You have to show me. You, have to, you are so patient with me. You, your love is just so immense to me that um, mine is very feeble and fractured and not consistent. But your love is gracious 
it's overwhelming, it's, it indulges, it covers, it keeps on giving. Thank you for being with us, even when the days seem like there is no hope. Thank you for being in us and shining through us. We pray that you will continue to be the Emmanuel, the God who wants to live inside of us and share every situation. We pray that you will encourage and lift up our church when we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. God bless and uh, God willing we'll see you next week um, in a new year and hopefully um, a good situation. Thank you.